Apple just announced macOS Ventura and iOS and iPadOS 16 with plenty of new productivity features. And who doesn't like to get a little more done in a little less time? Let's go over all these new features that relate to productivity to see how they're going to make you more productive. Now, first up, we've got better search in mail. This is amazing. I always recommend that people use search to find old emails rather than dragging every single email manually to a folder, which takes a lot of time and is often not worth it. Now you'll be able to get better mail search results more quickly, and you'll be able to see search results by type. This should make mail a lot easier to use. Next up is passkeys, which is a very cool technology. I've been using a password manager for years, which allows me to use a different password on each website without having to remember all of them. So that if one website where I have an account gets hacked, the hacker doesn't immediately have access to all my other accounts everywhere. So how does passkeys work? Passkeys is going to eliminate passwords altogether. So let's say right now I want to sign into a service that I use, for example, my email service provider. When I log in there, I type in my password, but I also have this USB C key that I I plug into my computer or hold near my phone. And together with the password, this key lets the website know that this is really me. So pass keys are going to completely eliminate the password and are going to make it so that you can use, for example, your iPhone instead of a USB key like that. And just by having your iPhone, which you'll authenticate with something like Face ID, will tell the website, yep, it's him, <laughs> let him in. So I'm really excited about this technology because it's both gonna be more secure and a lot easier to use. I'll be trying this out as soon as it comes out. Next up is richer collaboration, which Apple says will allow you to share notes, presentations, reminders, Safari tab groups, and other things in the Apple Messages app. And so when you share that with someone else, provided they're on an Apple device, of course, they'll instantly be able to edit whatever it is that you shared with them, and you'll be able to see each other's edits in real time. This is useful, although, how many people actually use pages, numbers, and Keynote, especially together with coworkers? Surely some people do, but Microsoft Office is a lot more popular. So I can't see myself using this very often, although, you know, the idea is neat. And if I do need to share a note with, say, my girlfriend for something around the house or whatever, I guess it'll be easy to send it to her that way. All right, next up is a feature called Stage Manager, which is going to come to the Mac with Mac OS Ventura and to the iPad with iPad OS 16. Now, Stage Manager on Mac, let's talk about that first. It looks really cool. It's going to automatically organize your apps and windows in a single view on any Mac so you can stay focused while easily moving between tasks, Apple says. This sounds great and, and it looks pretty cool. If I just play that for you, you'll see that it works like this. Okay, you can have one screen front and center and all the other ones off to the side. However, I often use mission control and spaces. So see, I've got lots of desktops and lots of apps open. This is how I work. And for me, Stage Manager is not really going to add that much. But if you often use a lot of windows on your Mac that are not full screen, I suppose Stage Manager could keep things a little bit cleaner. By contrast, Stage Manager on iPad looks fantastic. You'll be able to see multiple screens aside from the split screen view that already existed on iPad. You'll be able to have multiple windows and overlap them. It feels a bit weird to get excited about window management in 2022, but hey, that's where we are and it'll be a great new addition to iPad. And there is another great new productivity feature that is finally coming to iPad, which is proper support for using external screens. Before and right now, you can only use your iPad attached to an external screen by mirroring what is on your iPad to the external screen. But because the iPad has a different resolution than most computer screens, this means you'll often have two ugly vertical bars on your screen. And it also, you know, doesn't give you any extra screen real estate. Now you'll be able to actually extend your iPad's desktop to the external screen and you'll be able to use the new stage manager feature to manage your windows on the external screen as well. So this is going to be great if you often work on iPad from your home office say and you've got that external screen but you also bring your iPad on the go for work. Next up is a feature called continuity camera which I'm very excited about. It's gonna make things much better. Let me explain. Webcams generally suck. This is true for pretty much all webcams in all computers, including even in my fancy MacBook Pro. And even dedicated external webcams, of which I own a few, generally have such blah image quality. Now, when I 
go on Microsoft Teams or Zoom or whatever, I usually use this camera that I'm recording myself with right now to make myself look, you know, as handsome as I really am in real life. However, this is a multi-thousand dollar camera. And if you're not a video creator, you probably don't have one of those. But now with continuity camera, you can use your iPhone as your webcam. It looks like this, really crazy, right? You're just gonna hold your iPhone to the top of your Mac. And this is going to give you not quite the image quality that I would get from my fancy camera, but something that is very, very close, especially if the lighting is good. But either way, it's gonna be worlds better than what you would look like with the built-in webcam. So this is gonna make you look great on every single one of your video calls. Now, next up is the lock screen updates on iOS. Your lock screen will now be a lot more customizable. You'll be able to have different lock screens and you'll be able to tie those to different focus modes. More on that in a bit. Your notifications will be bundled and much less intrusive. You'll be able to install widgets on your lock screen and you'll be able to have even widgets that update live. Apple calls this live activity. So for example, it can show a score for a game that you're watching or it can show you in real time how far away your Uber is without you constantly having to unlock your phone just to check on this. From a productivity point of view, the ability to have different lock screens is really cool because you'll be able to tie it to different focus modes. So you'll be able to set up focus modes like personal and work and then assign your personal focus mode to your personal lock screen and your work focus mode to your work lock screen. And you can even set it up so that when you get to the office, your phone will automatically switch from personal to work and will hide all non-work notifications and maybe give you a different, you know, more safer work lock screen. These things are really cool and I think will be fantastic for people who have a really clear division between their work life and their personal life. You'll now also be able to use focus filters. So for example, in Apple's mail app right here, you're going to see a thing at the top that says filtered by focus. And you'll be able to say, hey, in my personal focus, I want to receive notifications and messages from these people. In my work focus, I want to be able to receive messages from these people, but not those people. And then when you're in a certain focus, say your work focus, you will not see personal mail in your mail app. This is really neat and Apple says this is also going to work in its own calendar app and in its own messages app but it gets better. These features are also going to be available for third-party apps. So for example, my calendar app of choice is Fantastical, and I hope that they will support this soon as well. So based on different focuses, I can have certain um, calendar events show up or not show up. And what I'm most excited about is my favorite to-do app, Things 3. Now, what is Things 3 going to be able to do with this? Am I going to be able to filter all of my to-dos for today by my work to-dos and my home to-dos? That would be absolutely fantastic and I know many of you are going to love this, so we'll be keeping an eye out for that. Back on the Mac, we've got System Preferences, which is now called system settings, which has a completely different look from what it looks like right now. This is a long overdue overhaul because to be honest, the system preferences app on the Mac right now feels really cluttered. And even I, as someone who makes videos teaching people how to do things on the Mac, I find it very difficult to find things sometimes and I often resort to searching. So it's great that this new system settings app is going to be much more organized and also that it's going to be more consistent with these settings on your iPhone and your iPad that you're probably already familiar with. Next up is the live text feature, which Apple introduced in a previous update that allowed you to select text in photos, which is great. This now also works in videos. So let's say I'm watching one of my girlfriend's data science videos. Here she's explaining how neural networks work, which to be honest, I don't really understand a lot about. Let's say I'm watching this, I wanna take some notes. I'll be able to simply select this text over here and copy and paste it, which can be so handy for students or generally people trying to learn things online. The Reminders app has a very cool update because it will now support templates. It will allow you to say, hey, here's a packing list that things I need to pack to make sure I never forget anything on a trip, you'll be able to put that in the Reminders app and create a new instance of it for a particular trip that you're going on. But you could also do this for ingredients you need for a barbecue or anything really where you have to follow a checklist. So that'll be a fantastic update. Really looking forward to trying that out. Finally, there are some updates in Apple Notes, which I love because I think Apple Notes is amazing and I love sharing with you all how I use Apple Notes. So Apple Notes will now be able to lock your notes with your Mac login password, or if you're on an iPhone or an iPad with your phone or iPad passcode, rather than using a separate password, which is just one more password that you'll have to remember. Very handy if you often lock notes like me. Then you'll be able to use 
different filters in your smart folders, which is also very convenient because you'll be able to browse your notes and organize your notes even more efficiently. And you'll be able to use the Quick Note feature on iPhone. So Quick Notes has existed on iPad and the Mac. On the iPad, you swipe up from the bottom right and on the Mac, you move your cursor to the bottom right and you can quickly take a note by whatever it is that you're looking at and attach whatever you're looking at to that note. That's now also going to work on iPhone. Great update to Apple Notes. So there's a lot to be excited about in Apple's upcoming software updates. The focus modes, the lock screens, the better search, stage manager. Hey, this, this all seems like really nice stuff. That said, true productivity, as we all know, is not about saving 10 seconds here or a minute there. Look, I love geeking out on this stuff as much as the next person, but real productivity is about doing more of the work that really matters to you. So if you wanna learn how to do more of that, I've got some video courses that are gonna help you with that and lots of videos are right here on YouTube as well in my productivity playlist. So make sure you check those things out. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Ciao.